medicine physician with Panetta Proactive. Dr. McCarthy was raised in Fernandina Beach, Florida. He graduated from Jacksonville University in Jacksonville, Florida with a bachelor's degree in biology. He then attended University of South Florida College of Medicine in Tampa, Florida, where he obtained his MD. He completed his residency in family medicine at Spartanburg Regional, where he was chief resident. Following graduation, Dr. McCarthy worked in the urgent care section of the ER in the Greenville Hospital System. He's board certified in family medicine and has a special interest in preventative care and wilderness medicine. Please help me welcome Dr. McCarthy. Introduction. Um, again, uh, from Palmetto Practice Healthcare, we've got an office in Spartanburg, and in April we opened an office in, uh, in Greenville, east north of Pleasantburg, and then on, uh, on Greenville Road, John B. White in, in Spartanburg. Um, my business partner's here, Jerome I. I. He was able to make it uh, this evening just to come kind of root me on. So. Uh, briefly, um, looks like it got cut off on the top, but um, just want to talk about Obamacare, Affordable Care Act, and kind of what I think the good, the bad, and the quote unquote the ugly may be. Um, so on the good side, I think there are some good things to it. There are some things from, from the healthcare provider perspective that I think are good and may be helpful to us. Um, no annual limits. I know a lot of folks that have got some major health bills, have a catastrophic condition, uh, they get capped out on their policy at half a million, a million, two million dollars, and that can't, they can't pay for their care. So good that they don't have annual limits. Um, there's no rescission uh, apparently allowed in there, so if somebody gets sick, insurance enables a way to cancel their insurance. So now you're sick, and now you're stuck without insurance. Um, preventative care coverage, I think this is big from our perspective as a family doctor. Um, I think historically healthcare pays a lot to the experts, to the specialists. Let's fix your heart attack, let's give you the stents, let's do the bypass, but not so much to, we won't cover the, well let's test you and see if you have diabetes, let's prevent the heart attack, let's prevent the stroke, let's prevent the problems. Some of the things Dr. Baker was alluding to. Let's prevent the major problems on down the line. So one of the good things is they're going to be covering more and more the preventative care stuff, cancer screenings, things like that. So I think that is a good a good part of the new uh, the new law. Um, they shouldn't exempt people because of pre-existing conditions. It's all doing one today. Regular guy, he and his wife both work and both both make a decent income. She's covered under her work. He has diabetes and therefore he cannot be insured under her work. At all. It wasn't, he said, I've got money, I'll pay for it. And if my premiums are higher, I'll pay for it. He, he does not have the option to be insured under his wife's plans. Um, so I think that's uh, another benefit to the new law. And then uh, lastly, uh, some insur insurer spending on care uh, should be capped at 80% of what the premiums collected are. I think that's good. I've been to meetings before um, that have taken place at insurance company headquarters. And, and let me tell you, the nicest marble countertops, uh, floors, bathrooms, uh, leather chairs that we sat in, and I'm thinking, here's where all the money's going into this enormous facility with these wonderful facilities, wonderful uh, amenities. That's where a lot of the money's going. So supposedly they're going to cap that um, at 80%. We'll see how that uh, that, that kind of goes through. As far as the bad, um, talk to, to anyone who, who has Medicaid. Um, a lot of people who have VA benefits or even Medicare. Um, the big thing is Medicaid there aren't a lot of uh, providers that accept Medicaid. So I think expanding Medicaid, um, giving folks this quote-unquote insurance isn't necessarily gonna help a whole lot. Um, I, I can tell you from five years in the emergency room it is very much overused and overabused. Um, and, and like it or not, a lot by the Medicaid system. Um, you've got 12 visits with your primary care doctor for a year for, uh, for preventative care, but that, that's it. And so if somebody says, well, I have diabetes and high cholesterol and depression, I need to go once a month to see my doctor. Where do I go when I sprain my ankle? Where do I go with this poison ivy? I go to the emergency room. It's covered 100%. I go three times a month. Whenever I have a cough, cold, or sniffle, I go to the emergency room because Medicaid covers it. But we all know Medicaid covers it by funding it through our taxes and everything else. So expanding Medicaid now to cover these folks without putting in the support system, I just don't think that's necessarily a good idea. Um, employers burden, obviously, uh, uh, 
we'll, we'll see all the details, but 50 or more employees now all of a sudden we have to provide a health care insurance to them. So that's going to be more expensive. People are going to get, there's going to be some that get laid off. The cost of doing business is going to rise. It's going to be passed along to the consumer. Um, Medicare reductions, there's a thing in there about Medicare reductions. They're supposedly going to feed it back into the system and help improve care, but until we know all the little details in the, in the 30 plus thousand pages of documents, I don't really know that that's a good idea um, without always having more and more Medicare cuts every year. And lastly, complexity. We've probably all seen the, the pictures that were circulated around online with that 30 page document of paper of the explanations. I mean, it's seven feet tall of stacked, uh, stacked piece of paper on, on uh, top of one another. Very complicated, a lot of folks don't know the details. Um, there's just too much stuff that we don't know and it's, I think, too complex. And lastly, the ugly is the cost. Um, I was just kind of reading up, so I'm refreshing my memory on this today. Uh, when it came out in 2010, they said, over the 10 years to implement this fully, it's gonna cost $940 billion. Um, but we think we can save 1.044 trillion through taxes and extra savings and things like that. So therefore, we're, we're netting this improved cost. But then in 2012, they said, ah, well, let's refigure the numbers. It's going to cost 1.76 trillion. And nobody's going to refigure these savings of 1.044, but we can all see that this is going to end up probably costing us um, in the long run over that 10-year period. I found this the other day. I kind of threw it in last minute. Uh, premiums, we already know everybody's premiums going up, and I've already seen even with my own insurance, the premiums really jumped up um, as things became, become, became passed. Um, and I think premiums are just gonna continue to, to increase because we have all these extra costs that we now have to save. Again, I like no annual limits, I like no rescission, I like preventative care coverage, but that stuff costs money. To cover the colonoscopies, the mammogram, and the pap smears, that money has to come from somewhere. Um, and so this, uh, this graph here is showing um, premiums for Obamacare exchange in California versus e-health insurance. Um, kind of here in the pinkish color is the pre-Affordable Care Act, um, and then the lighter blues is afterwards. So for a 25-year-old, before we enacted this, it was $92 a month. Now if you get catastrophic coverage, which you can get in the new plan only if you're under age 20, 30, I don't remember the numbers. Again, it's buried somewhere in that big report. Um, get catastrophic coverage, so it doesn't cover much, but we went up 100% to $184. And if we don't get a catastrophic and we get the bronze, which is the lowest level plan, it's gonna cost $205. So all the savings, hey, great, everybody's insured now, I have this bronze plan, but before it only cost me $92 a month, now it cost me $205. And here's a 40-year-old, $121 to $261. Um, for fun, I went to the California Health Exchange website well, my premiums went up. If I lived in California versus heat, my premiums almost doubled. I don't get any extra benefit out of that. My preventive care is covered. Well, my plan was already covered. Um, so I think increasing all these services is great, but it's going to come at a huge cost. So I don't think we're ready for it yet. Um, and I'll put this in a very busy slide just to kind of dumb it down. Here's where I think a lot of the problem is, is we're going to continue on this traditional model of medicine, and it is broken. We really need to rethink things. Um, so basically, somebody's got a cough and fever, you schedule an appointment, you gotta wait a couple of days to get in. Um, they collect your co-insurance or do all your paperwork. I see the patient, then I send you the x-ray to get a, uh, the radiology to get an x-ray. They collect the copay, they send in the payment, it's denied, we send it again, we collect the copay. On and on, patient pays balance. The same thing happens to the blood work, all these extra steps. The same thing happens to the, uh, in the office got the pneumonia, here's your medicine, and you gotta go through the same thing at the pharmacy again. So everything in red is just extra. It's not helping any in the care of the patient. It's just extra headache, extra paperwork, extra work on both my end, and really the insurance company's end. So we've got a lot of waste here. Um, cost of waste, how much is this costing us? $82,000 per provider dealing with insurers. Well, that's a lot of money. That's a huge amount. That's a whole couple of employees worth of money right there. 2.7 staff per doctor to handle all the insurance paperwork. 3.4 doctors per week, I think it's probably more than that. Um, 20 hours for the nurse or the medical assistant, 50 clerical hours. Um, and that leads to obviously increased cost, $82,000. So we gotta make that up, either pay cuts, uh, we lose some employees, but we have all this extra work to do so we can't cut the employees. Um, so what do we do? We crank up our visits. Let's get them in and get them out, faster, faster, faster. 
I read an article not too long ago that said we really need to get this 10 minute visit down to seven minutes because that's how long it should take to see and diagnose someone. And, and they, were, they were proposing, cut out the small talk. We don't need to talk about the weather. We don't need to talk about 4th of July. Just get them in, figure out what's wrong with them and get them out the door. Well, I don't like doing that. You don't like doing that. Going to the doctor and just saying, you're here for your diabetes? Let's take care of your diabetes. Oh, I got this rash too. No, this is just your diabetes visit. You can make another appointment. We'll talk about your rash. We'll talk about whatever else you have going on. You have to take time off of work. You have another copay and all those extra red boxes to deal with. So what we do at our office um, is a direct primary care model. It's kind of the new, one of the new terms that's being tossed around for what we do. And similar to Dr. Baker, we don't accept insurance. We don't file with the insurance company. If you have insurance, we can still see you, um, but you pay at the time of service. And so we took that nice, long, busy slide with all those red boxes and simplified it. You have a call from fever, we'll schedule an appointment. We'll get you in today. If you don't have any appointments, we'll still see you as a walk-in, um, or we'll get you an appointment tomorrow. I see you. I can run the CBC, I can run the lab work there in the office. I can do the x-ray in the office and interpret it. I give you the medicines or I give you a prescription. You go get them at the fill at the pharmacy. Walmart, Bilo, Ingalls, Target all have $4 lists. A lot of these generic medicines are covered on that list. Bilo and the Publix have uh, free, four free, five free antibiotics, one free diabetes, one free blood pressure medicine. I can get a lot of stuff done for not a lot of extra money and, and no red, no extra work, no extra headache. So the benefits of this model versus the traditional model, it's simple, it's easy. We don't have to do a lot of paperwork. We don't have a lot of staffing. I have myself and three, uh, three staff members. One does x-ray, one's the secretary, and one does the lab and the blood work. Um, work for patients directly. As Dr. Baker said, I don't have to answer to somebody that says, see more patients, talk about this, don't talk about that. I work for you, and if you're not happy with your care, we talk about it. If I think you need an x-ray, I, I let you know, and here's how much it's going to cost. It's all up front. Um, increased appointment times, I can spend more time with you because I don't have to try to crank through and see as many for the day. Um, open scheduling system, improved quality. Um, and then overall, I can tell you for sure it decreases spending because I can take the time to talk to you and say, I really don't think you need an x-ray for your probably sprained ankle, and here's why. And how we save the cost of an x-ray. If it's not, if you feel like it's still hurting the next day, come back tomorrow, I'll shoot you the x-ray. Um, I can make those decisions. I won't charge you for the visit just for the x-ray. We'll talk about it, no problem, tomorrow. Uh, but I can take the time to talk to people and tell them what they really need. Um, and then kind of from a, a, a system standpoint, encourages students to choose primary care. We all graduate from med school, six figures plus in debt, and you get out of residency and say, oh my goodness, how am I gonna pay this back? This is a huge debt. I can try to do this kind of uh, on my own, um, like we're doing now, I do pretty well at it, or I can go join the group, and Blue Cross Blue Shield's gonna send me patients, and yeah, I gotta see 40 a day, and yeah, I gotta cram through it, but I've got these bills to pay, and sure is nice to be to know this is what my guaranteed income is. So I think by doing it this other way, um, it encourages people to go into primary care because of that standpoint, but also because we went into medicine, all three of us went into medicine to help people not to push the paperwork, not to deal with the phone, on the phone with the insurance companies back and forth. We had to help people and have that direct interaction. So I think get more folks to choose primary care. And ultimately, um, of course not for us just yet, but ultimately competition. Uh, so if somebody comes up across the street and says, well I can do the same stuff you can, but my labs are $5 cheaper, well then I'm either going to match the price, I'm gonna figure out a way to make myself look better and be better, encourage competition, decrease cost, increase quality, that sort of thing. So I think that's another reason why uh, this model is an improvement. Um, and then here, uh, there's a, a, a big company that's been doing this on the west coast of the U.S., a little uh, longer than we have. Q-Lions is the name. So I don't have this data for us yet since we're a relatively new startup. Um, but you can see here, it talks about the different referrals and different costs that are associated with care um, listed here. And then their numbers per year, per thousand, and then the benchmarks are average. And you can see for all these things, the number of ER visits much uh, lower for their patients. Hospitalization visits much lower. Hospitalized days much lower. Specialist visits lower. Advanced radiology, CAT scans, MRIs lower. Surgeries lower. Primary care visits, where we're going to prevent these bad things from happening, much, much higher. So we've improved people's health, we've improved people's quality of health. Um, we don't use this extra money. We don't end up spending all this extra stuff because we can take care of the patients directly. And then I'll run through these quickly. This is what we do in our office. We kind of have two ways of doing things. So the first uh, 
year and a half or so, we did just kind of an a la carte fee for service, uh, just like when you go to the store, here's how much the uh, um, gallon of milk costs, here's how much the local bread costs, same sort of thing. And we just inter introduced our proactive patient program uh, just a couple of months ago, and I'll, I'll tell you briefly on those. So here's an example, so fee for service, a la carte, a visit $60. If I'm in the room for 10 minutes, kind of buzz through things, you got the, a rash that's poison over here, your prescription 60. If I'm in the room for an hour, we got to talk about this complicated five different medical problems at 60. I don't want to deal with all the paperwork and that was a complex visitor, that was a medium visitor, that was a, a simple visit. It's just $60, it just averages out well. Sports physical, $30, tested run on site, about $20. Almost all of our lab works, about $25. Uh, laceration repair, $150, $200. It's really large and complex. Um, X-ray we do on site, $60. And then, like I said, we just introduced the practice patient program. Uh, $60 a month averages out to about what most everybody ends up spending on their care for the year anyway. Um, $40 for, for child age 1 to 26. Um, and then we've kind of just arbitrarily chosen a three-month minimum. Uh, and basically, it includes all your preventative care. So your diabetes testing, your thyroid, your cholesterol, your visits, all of those things. Um, and we're going to limit the number of patients, the number of excuse me, visits that we, uh, that we have per day once we get this kind of full swing. Um, so again, it includes the visits, the blood counts, the metabolic panels, the cholesterol, the thyroid, the diabetes, prostate tests, the office labs, x-rays, EKGs, and then a, a discount basically for supplies, for lacerations and drainage and basic splinting. Um, so far, we've had a, at least a number of folks sign up, and the good thing is, is they come in, they get the care they need, and they know what they're going to spend. They can budget the amount for the year, for the month, and know at the time this is what I need, and uh, they just slip it in right with the rest of their costs, with the internet, the telephone, the mortgage, everything else. It's, it's very simple, very easy. From the patient perspective, it's nice from our perspective. Um, it helps a little bit with our budgeting, but then more importantly, it helps to say, well, I think you're due for a cholesterol or a... Uh, well, you've lost some weight. Why don't we check your cholesterol and see if it's come down where it needs to be? We don't need to start this. We don't need to continue this medicine. You're doing well. Let's just go ahead and check it. It's all included. Um, it's been very nice for those things. Um, and I found this nice little graphic I want to throw up here at the end. Kind of getting out the insurance middleman, the guy in the suit's kind of withered away, and now it's just the patient and the doctor directly, uh, how it used to be um, in years past, and in our opinion, how it should uh, continue to be moving forward. Thank you.